So in a funny way, I almost don't want to make this video, right? There's this amazing new shop in East London, in Hackney, selling vintage guitar amps. It's not a guitar shop, it's a guitar amp shop, it's a guitar amp repair, vintage repair place run by Jim. And it's been there for about six months. I just don't want you all to go there and buy all these amps. The first amp you just saw, that was a Gibson amp. And this place has a wonderful array of Gibson amps. And I've got my eye on some of those things. And uh, I don't want you to take them first. <laughs> but I did promise Jim that I would uh, try and help him sort of spread the word about his shop. Um, honestly, uh, it's a place I would have dreamt about and never expected to exist. So Jim basically has collected all these amps up I don't know how over how long, I assume quite a long time. There's amps ranging from large Fender, um, you're gonna see some, some, some large Fender sort of uh, band masters and things, to all these little old Gibson amps, to uh, some old Magnetone stuff, and Gretsch amps, and it's amazing. Let's, let's have a look at this, uh, this Magnetone here. <laughs> So, I mean, there's barely a name more mythical in the guitar amp world than like Magnetone, an old Magnetone. Maybe it's just the timing in which I came back into guitar that Magnetone had sort of started to rise again out of the ashes, you know, owned by Billy Gibbons or part owned by Billy Gibbons. And also there was that Origin FX pedal, the Magma 57, which I, I really loved. And that was based on an old Magnetone amp. And you know, it was a hard to get amp and, and Origin FX had managed to get hold of it and sort of create this pedal based on it. And you know, eventually I did get my own Magnetone Twilighter. So being able to try the 280, which is the model that I was familiar with, you know, having read about Magnetone, uh, what a special moment that was. I, I wasn't sure what to expect, whether it was gonna be as big and bold and bright and dirty as my Twilighter or something else. And frankly, it was something else. Um, Really hoping it's still there when I go back to the shop in a week or two. Um, I'm ho I'm hoping that Jim's gonna sort of let me borrow stuff on a regular basis. I'd love to bring that Magnetone back here and compare it. I don't think they'll compare equally. What I mean by that is they're very different. In the shop, the Magnetone was not as loud as I thought it would be, but on the other hand, it was warmer, it was rounder, and it was old sounding and it was the, the sort of vibe sound you heard was i would say better than what i got get in my modern one and my modern one is dirtier and bigger and much louder and, and everything so yeah that'd be really interesting and what a, what a thing to see now that one you see on the front of it it said noble rather than uh magnetone but it said magnetone on the back 
and I believe it was sold in a department store. Um, must be quite a high-end thing. I don't know if Barnes & Noble, which I know as a bookshop, was ever a department store. I guess if you're in America, you can tell me. But that's what it sounds like to me. Anyway, uh, that was just a great thing to see. Um, right, let's move on to something Gibson-y. So Jim has actually lent me this Rhythm King for a couple of weeks to make videos about and, and to enjoy. And thank you very much, Jim. This is a massive amp. It's massive. Look, let me move this basement in front of it. So it's wider, much wider, and it's heavier. And thank God it has a brilliant handle. Look at that. <laughs> Gibson really went for it with handles. Uh, you can see there's this Falcon up here. That's also got a beautiful handle. And interestingly, the SWAT that I borrowed from Coda, which is based on a Gibson amp, has a similar handle. And I wouldn't have known that detail. So that's a really cool thing in itself. Now, you might be wondering why this looks so gnarly. If you saw my last video, I did mention in brief, this amp was rescued from a strip uh, club in America. I guess the strip club co closed down and they were selling everything and Jim managed to get hold of it and import it. I mean, this amp is 1961. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe the bar was not a strip club in 1961. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing back then. Uh, I'm thinking more like, you know, they sort of, like in Goodfellas, you know, you'd have lots of tables and singers and, you know, that sort of club. But anyway, now, what is this? Well, it's basically like a Fender Twin, I guess. It's supposed to be a clean machine. And uh, there's something quite interesting on the back. Let me turn this thing around. There's quite a few interesting things on the back of here. One of them is the, the way that you access things. Uh, let me turn this up. I'm gonna make a standalone video about this, but if, you've, if, you watch, if you're watching this, then, then a lot of this stuff will also be in that video, except that I'll also record it in here. At the moment, you're only gonna hear what I recorded in the shop. Look at this. This would not get regulated now, <laughs> sadly. Quirks, when it comes to electrical stuff, no longer truly exist, uh, unless you're looking at e-bikes and hoverboards from spurious shops. But really, you can't be doing this. <laughs> and I love it, absolutely love it. So this is import, so I have to use a step-down transformer. And uh, look, you can't read anything on here, it's all mainly gone. I imagine it's quite sweaty in a strip club. But we have treble, bass, and volume on both channels. Here's the, the difference in the channels. The only thing I can tell I was told by Jim, this switch here, it's equivalent to like a compressor but or a, a limiter. It limits high-end stuff and low-end stuff. This is really meant for rhythm, like chugging along all night in the background, perfectly clean. But what surprised me is, let's hear this. Listen to how warm and how much it blooms. <laughs>
tend to be pretty underpowered, I think is what Jim carried on to say before my camera shut off there. Uh, yeah, so going back to that Rhythm King, it's a really intriguing amp to me just because I expect big and clean amps to have a little bit of a sort of sterile character, but it doesn't at all. But a bit like a twin, when you crank it, it can be a little bit harsh in its overdrive, which is a thing in itself. Uh, I imagine it will take pedals very well, but we'll find out in a video. Now to this Falcon, I wasn't expecting this, but on the other hand, having looked around the shop for a few minutes, I, I noticed the Falcon sitting there, and I thought what a cool little thing it was. Uh, and I was hoping it would sound sort of like the way it does, like really gnarly and bluesy and swampy. And, um, you know, I've got a lot of sort of hi-fi sounding amps, like, you know, the Two Rocks and the Magnetone and, and other stuff, the Rift stuff. And so I have been looking for something really like, What's the right word? Not authentic, this probably doesn't make sense, but just something that would give me that old tone. And I had actually got a little Laney, no, PV amp that cost me a hundred quid, solid state thing that's supposed to do that, but it never quite sounded right. So it's never been on the channel. But yeah, this little Falcon thing is just uh, brilliant. It, it's quiet, cranked, and with a, you know, with a Telecaster on full volume, it's like 90, 91 decibel max. And it's like sort of mushy, but it's great. It's great. It's reverb is a bit all over the place and it's tremolo is it just washes over you, but not in that sort of big sound way. It's not really big sounding. We're going to explore it in its own video, but this was like the find for me and the fact that it cost 800 quid, you know, it wasn't a couple of grand or anything that was appealing to me because at a couple of grand, it may not really stack up with what is a very particular use. You know, I don't think it's gonna take pedals well. You couldn't play it live. And maybe, maybe there's something that can be fixed in there to make it louder, but do I want to do that? I don't think I do. I think I just wanna record with this amp. So yeah, we'll delve into that in another video. Okay, there's another Gibson amp. This one is really weird. It's not branded as Gibson, it's branded as Maestro, which I believe is a company or brand that Gibson had. They had their uh, fuzz pedal with the Maestro. Also, you see the Maestro Vibrola arm on a, on Gibson guitars, and this is a Maestro amp. Now, it's like a proper stereo amp. Speakers are even facing sort of diagonally outwards. It's quite expensive, this amp. I think it took a lot of refurbishment. It's quite a, it's like a piece of furniture, this thing. Uh, so let's just hear it for a minute. Badging, so normally they say Gibson, but apparently they made four with Maestro. Yeah. 
Well, that's a bit nice, isn't it? Um, yeah, a four by 10 is probably my favorite thing anyway, whether it's a basement, a super reverb or a concert like this. And I do like a brown Fender sound. Uh, yeah, it misses reverb. Um, and I think that's why they made those outboard Fender reverb units. And I imagine if I plugged one in, that would have come to life massively. Um, but this amp is actually really well priced. It's about 2,300 quid, which I think to get a proper piece of Fender history, 1960 Fender concert. Plus he's put a transformer in it so you don't have to have the uh, the external transformer because it's, it's an American model. Yeah, <sighs> I can't have them all. That's what I always say to myself, I can't. And yeah, so I'm not looking at that one any further, but I would recommend you trying it and having that harmonic trim. Yeah, it's a lovely thing to play first hand. Um, quite different to your normal bias trim. Um, now, the next one, when you get to sweet amps, what's really cool out in the front window, he's got these four piggyback amps, whether they're like, there's like a showman and a bassman and a bandmaster. They're all those blonde ones that sit like a large cab at the bottom with a small, narrower head on top and they sort of sit on these metal um, pegs that you connect them to. So yeah, they're like a really just very unique thing. Uh, and I'd never played one before. So let's hear what that sounds like. Brown face. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot more, um, the effect is bigger than it is one, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a lot more of a vibe, isn't it? They're just pretty cool things, aren't they? These brown era sort of blonde, large amps. Uh, it's just unique. And um, they're not at ridiculous prices. You know, if you go back a couple of years and, and look at the basements, the tweed basements, you're paying a lot more money. I mean, I'm not saying they sound the same, but you get a historical feeling and sound when you play. And it's something that could, uh, well, be a piece of furniture to look at if you're not touring it. But um, yeah, I'm yet to really sort of decide whether I'm predominantly a tweed, brown or black panel guy. I, I do chop and change. Um, and that comes to the reason why I actually went to Sweet in the first place was I am selling my 1967 Vibrolux and decided to, to, to hand that over to Jim to sell. And um, he's had a look through it, it's in great condition and uh, he actually told me most of the parts are 1966, so I guess, you know, Fender made the parts and then put them together later, but um, I'm looking for a super reverb, a black panel super reverb, that's why I'm selling the Vibrolux. So I'm not buying one of these brown amps or another tweed amp, uh, but I, I, it's a lot of fun to go and play them. And I think Jim's pricing is, is really keen, actually. Um, that magnetone earlier, wow, what a piece of history that is. You know, if you're a gigging guy and you need one gigging amp, I'm not suggesting most of these amps because, you know, they're 70 years old, sort of 60 years old. You know, they're not going to stand up to that. And in a lot of cases, you know, they're, they just need to be sort of, they need TLC or they've had the TLC from Jim. But what I mean is they need to be sort of handled with care. Um, so just keep that in mind. But now is the time, really. These things are going to become rarer and rarer and more and more expensive, as we've already seen. You know, in 10 years, the prices have doubled, less than 10 years. Um, 
I could see another double in the next 10 to 15 years, uh, especially with the way the world's going. Uh, I thought we'd finish up with this very cute little magnetone. It's very cool. Um, yeah, it's tiny. It's five watts, it's tiny, it's like a champ. I think it sounds way more interesting than a champ, personally. Um, but, yeah, you can't put this on stage. I guess you could mic it up. But for recording, how cool is this? It has that perfect Southern Blues sort of little tinny radio sound to it. Yeah, let's have a listen. <laughs> 